Hi there, this is Morgan with Morgan Burks Photography and Product Shop and today I'm going to show you um, a little bit about my favorite tools in Photoshop. The first one I'm going to start with is the brush tool. It's a pretty common tool in Photoshop um, but I'm going to show you a few things that lots of people might not know about it. So I have my brush at 100% opacity and 100% flow and then I'm just going to sweep across and show you this is with my brush at 0% hardness and then if you wanted to you could bring the hardness up and then you get a little bit more of a firm um, edge there and then when you put it at about 100% hardness you see that there's no softness to the edge at all and so if you ever hear someone say um, that they used a soft brush that's what they mean just that the hardness is at 0% and so I'm gonna undo those I'm just hitting alt control Z on my keyboard there we go Okay, so the next thing I want to show you um, is sometimes people will mention that they're using a layer mask or something and they're painting onto the layer mask but it's not really affecting the photo and they don't know why. Um, one thing it could be is up here there's a mode and you can change the mode of your brush and sometimes it will happen accidentally or you don't mean to bump something. Um, so just make sure that if that's happening to you, it's not working properly, just make sure that it's in normal mode um, and then that should be better. Uh, another thing is flow. Lots of people adjust the opacity of the brush, but they don't really know about flow. And so I'm going to show you a little bit about that. I'm going to put the flow down kind of low so we can see the opacity of the brush is set to 100. And so that just means that that's how dark our brush can get, is at 100%. It's going to be completely solid colored. Um, the flow represents how many times you have to go over that spot before it fills in that solid color. Um, before it lets you get to your full opacity. And at a low flow, you have to go over that spot more times. So let's say that we put our flow down about eight. You have to go over that spot a lot to get it to go to its full opacity. And so with blending, sometimes especially around pieces of hair, you'll notice that if you lower your flow, it helps you blend better and be more realistic because you can still see those hairs under there and you can kind of tweak it to your, your liking um, just by how many times you brush over that certain spot. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is the clone tool and this one is also a pretty common tool. Lots of people use it. Um, I'm going to put my opacity at 100 and on the clone tool you can also adjust the hardness of your brush. So if you alt select somewhere and then you paint you can see that it's kind of a very smooth transition. It, it fills it in. It looks really natural. Um, if you have a harder edge of your brush, let's see here. You can hit here and then you can notice that it doesn't, it's not quite as soft. It doesn't really blend that in very well um, and it's, not, it's a little bit more noticeable that you've done some changes here. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer and then you'll see. Sometimes it helps to, we'll have the clone tool, sometimes it helps to have a harder edge brush, especially if you're going around, let's say you're cloning around skin and you need to get right up there next to it and you don't want it to look all hazy and soft. Um, you know, it can help to get right up close to solid, you know, strict edges where you need it to be nice and, um, and defined. But if you're doing more of a subtle kind of edit and you don't want it to be noticeable that you've done some changes, lower opacities definitely help because they just blend right in and it looks a lot more natural, a lot more blended. So the next one I want to talk about is the healing brush tool. And this one is just like the clone tool, only it is um, it blends for you. So if you're a little bit lazier like me, it you'll probably relish in the fact that you don't get as much work. You don't have you don't have to do as much work with this one, I should say. So I'm gonna alt click on her forehead and then just edit out this hair. I'm just gonna sweep over it and you'll see that it doesn't match by color. It's actually a lot lighter, but it just kind of sweeps it in and blends it for you. And so then I'll do it again here. And you'll just have to watch textures because as you can see, that was a little bit smoother there. Um, that's the only thing you really have to watch out with um, with the healing brush tools, just different shades or different textures. Sometimes see it'll add in where you don't want it. Um, so and one thing about the healing brush tool that's actually pretty cool is that let's say you are editing someone's acne or someone's, I don't know if you're like me, freckles or something like that. You can put your brush, you can alt define a source there. And then if you come down here to edit it out, uh, you'll notice that your source still stays up there on the forehead. No matter where you click, you can click on the other cheek, it still stays up there in that same general area on the forehead. So if you've got a clear patch of skin, you can clone directly from there and you don't have to keep redefining your source unless there's a different texture pattern in the skin or something like that. But you'll notice that if you use the clone tool, I'm switching over to the clone tool now, if you are 
using the clone tool to edit, you can alt click on her forehead and then edit out your spots. Again, it doesn't blend for you, so you'd have to be a little bit more careful with that or use a lower opacity. But then if you come over here, see it doesn't stay on the forehead. Your source just stays the same distance from your brush every time. So let's say I clicked here on her cheek and I was coming over here. It's about an inch apart or so, and you'll notice that it stays the same angle and the same distance from your brush every time. And so that's one thing about the clone tool that I don't always like. Sometimes I like just to be able to select an area and then edit from there. And I also like that it blends for you. It's a lot easier. So um, I guess you'll just have to kind of gauge what you're editing and see which tool you'll use. Sometimes with the healing brush tool you'll notice, here I'll edit out some of this hair and you can see, um, just select a source over here and then when you go to edit out the hair it will do it but sometimes if you get too close to that you know source of color or something it will try to blend that color in with it and it might not look as natural. This might not be the best um, one to show, a photo to show it on, but you'll see that if you had an area and you really needed to get close to it um, and the healing brush was, was cloning it too much, you could use the clone brush here and get nice and close. And then if for any reason it, it didn't blend very well, you could just grab your healing brush tool, select your source, and then just blend in those clone marks if that makes a difference for you. And again, this isn't the best subject to show on, uh, but maybe if you're editing and you're getting close to close or something like that, um, you'll notice it might be easier to just clone so that you get that, it's not blending the colors you don't want. And then to, to blend that clone brush in, you can use your healing brush tool. You could always use a low opacity of your clone brush too, but um, using the tools together really helps you kind of have a diverse way of editing and kind of lowers your editing time as well. So that's all for today, just those three tools that are my favorite. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, you can email me at morgan at morganburks.com or you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash morganburksphotography. Thanks so much and have a great day.